Hey, you having withdrawal symptoms from me? I know you are, it's been about four days. It's a long time. Yes, I missed you too. Anyway, good to see everybody again. Um, and I wanted to talk about the idea of what is it that we're taking with us from all the learning that we've been doing for the last, I don't know, 45 days or so. What are we taking with that for the year? And it says in Tehillim, this is what a righteous person is supposed to pray about at a time of finding, it sounds like, but it's also from the root of motza'e, at the end of. So at the end of a holiday, when you're so inspired, or at the end of Shabbat, when you've had some kind of insight, some kind of spiritual elevation, what are you taking afterwards with you? into the rest of the year. And this is really what a person's supposed to pray about. Like he's asking God, here here we go, let me read this for you for a second. Alzotit palel, this is what we're supposed to pray about. Manish ar beyado, what's held, what do I hold on to in my hand? Uvamehu yotze mikol hayamim akdoshim ha'elu shetafkidam leha'ir leyehudi et kol hashana. These days are supposed to light up our whole life. You're supposed to take the energy from all these past six weeks or so, right? And they're supposed to bring that energy, that spiritual inspiration into the rest of your life. How are you going to do that? So um, this connects to Shabbat, by the way, because it's Tuesday and we're really doing our Shabbat mini series here. Okay, but it will connect. So um, he says that this this kind of a prayer is um, you can you can compare it to a person who was, you know, for whatever reason is in, um, well, it's actually in lockdown. Hey, it's in lockdown. That's what we're talking about here. What does that mean? For whatever reason, let's say a person uh, committed a crime and he's on house arrest, right? Or let's say he's actually put in to isolation in prison. Let's say he's in prison, he's did so done something really bad, he gets into isolation, right? And sometimes he's just in a bigger, you know, jail, right? And sometimes he's with other people. Sometimes he's under house arrest. So he's in his own home, but he's still under house arrest. He cannot leave. And even more than that, we all here in Yerushalayim, we are in prison to a certain extent. We are in lockdown. We're in prison. There's certain places we can't go. And if we try and go, it's like forever getting there because of the traffic and you have to answer to people and explain why you need to go there. So you don't feel free. There's a lack of freedom. And what David HaMelech asks Hashem in Tehillim, Hotzi'a mi masger nafshi. Allow me to, uh, allow my soul to get out of its imprisonment. Hotzi'a mi masger, the same root as seger. Can't believe this. Hashem literally is sending me these insights as I'm speaking. It didn't even occur to me as I'm reading it. Masger, take out of the seger, take out of this lockdown, my soul. And what that means is that this is what happens to us spiritually. It, it, you know, we said the metaphor is, is physically, you, you can sometimes be in prison. This is a spiritual prison. Your soul is in prison. And what does that mean? A person is within sometimes spiritual imprisonment, that he's not in control of his own self, of his moods, of his feelings, of his of his character traits, of his thoughts, of his beliefs, of his values. And as we feel, we are in prison. We are being affected by external circumstances. Sometimes he's not uh, completely in control of his mind and what he's thinking about, and all these thoughts are making him crazy. Of his desires, his feelings. There are some kinds of actions that he's not completely in control of. The Adam Ka'asir, and he feels like a prisoner. Hanatun Ba'azikim, that even it has, um, what's Azikim? Um, handcuffs, thank you. So, Hana'ul Tachat Masker Ve'enobir Shutatzmo, you feel like you're in prison and you're not in your own reshut. You're not um, an owner of yourself. It's the worst feeling, and that's what we need to ask Hashem after all these chagim, all these inspiring times, okay? All the insights that we reached, all the spiritual learning we've been doing, all the elevation of our soul. We feel like, wow, we, we get it now. We are in this relationship with Hashem. We know Hashem is in control. 
theoretically, we should be joyful all the time. We should take that joy that we reached on Sukkot and on Shemini Atzeret when we sat down by ourselves with Hashem with a cup of coffee and anything that we asked for could have been granted for us and was granted for us in a good way and that we knew Hashem loves us and that Hashem does everything for the best and for the good and that we are in good hands. What a feeling of joy and serenity and how wonderful would that be if we could bring it into our daily life every single day for the rest of the year, right? So this is what we're supposed to pray about. And he says, the same thing happens on Shabbat, every single Shabbat, which is so exciting because that's what we're working on, ladies, right? I'm going to keep seeing you every Tuesday, whether you like it or not. And I'm going to talk about Shabbat. And he says, this is what happens on Shabbat. During the week, we get it. You're in lockdown and your soul is in lockdown, okay? And and why? Because you're, you're stuck dealing with so much routine and so much confusion and so many struggles that we're going through. And some people have an issue with parnasa, with livelihood. And some people have issues with their children. Afuf tradod parnasa, vitsa'ar gidul banim. The children are either off the derech or at risk or in addictions or health or unhealthy or or just unhappy, right? Ah, oh, when your kids are unhappy, it's the worst, right? And kol ele ha'inyanim hem kemas gerim hasogrim al nafsho. You feel like your soul is in prison. You know that feeling? You wake up in the morning and you're like, you have a stomach ache. You can't even deal with the fact that you're in this reality. That is when your soul is in prison. And what we have to ask Hashem is, and this is, and what ha- wait, and what happens on Shabbat? You can leave your imprisonment, whatever it is that's holding you in that prison and that's making you feel sick to your stomach and you can't believe you're in this reality. On Shabbat, if you just let it go and let God and really get back to that feeling of, oh, I don't run the world. Oh, Hashem runs the world. Oh, I am in completely amazingly good hands because I'm in my Father in Heaven's hands. And He's totally, infinitely, ultimately in control and loves me and is good and it's all good. It's all gonna be okay. If you can reach that kind of clarity on Shabbat, when you don't have all of those distractions, or if we can try and take ourselves out of those distractions and really remind ourselves of the clarity on Shabbat that we reached during these last 45 days or so, right? That is what we need to remind ourselves of and to ask Hashem to please help us with, okay? And he says, it's another example. He says, oh, this is beautiful, this is beautiful. There's another pasuk in Tehillim, when it says, after it says this idea of taking my soul out of prison, it also says, um, David HaMelech says, Ani avdecha ben amatecha pitachta lemoserai. We saw in Hallel that you, got, you guys have been saying Hallel every single day, right, over the last good bunch of days, right? It feels like, oh my gosh, I have nothing to say in my prayers today because it's like a regular weekday. Like, wow, there was so much Hallel. Anyway, in Hallel, it says, I am your servant, the son of your maidservant, the son of your servant, right? Like even my mother was a servant to you. She, he says, Pitachta lemoserai. So you might as well open up my handcuffs, open up my my the things that are binding me the bonds right because i have nowhere to go i was born into this prison right i was born into this palace i am a serv- your servant but i'm also the son of your maid servant which means i am i this is my household this is my home you don't need to put me in bonds it, you know wrap me up or or, or or tie me anywhere because I have nowhere to go. I am run, If I run away from you, I'm just running to you, okay? That's what David HaMelech says, so you might as well open up my bonds. And what that means is, I am here to stay. I am in this system. I am here, I was born into it, and I wanna stay here, I'm not running away. So you might as well make it easier for me, clear for me. Make it like just comfortable for me to be in this. 
I'm here. I want to get it. I want to understand this relationship with you. I want to feel the love. I want to feel the hug. I want to feel the clarity. Okay? So that is what we're saying to Hashem at the end of these Chagim, at the end of all these holidays, and towards every single Shabbat coming up. Okay? When we finally get a little bit of clarity and we feel like we got a glimpse of the next world or the next like just like a, a time when we don't have all these distractions right this is what we should focus on Hashem I'm here to stay give me the clarity release my bonds and the last point is just ask Hashem to please allow me to tie down the Yom Tov Isru Chag Ba'avotim is another thing it says in Hallel hold on to the Chag with thick ropes with tight ropes Hold it on, tie it down, right? Tie down the Chag, which means all the insights and all the clarity and all the spirituality that I was able to gain, allow me to tie that down with heavy ropes that can, that can just maintain it, right? Maintain all the clarity and keep it all going for the rest of the year, okay? So that's basically what we're working on, ladies, and I'll see you again probably next Tuesday, okay?